Hello and welcome to Smart Money. Now on the occasion of Children's Day, we decided to move out of the office and head into the Edelweiss office to meet Radhika Gupta, the MD and CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management. Uh, she needs no introduction of course, but she's a new mum, so she has a new job as well to handle. And uh, Radhika, um, first of all, congratulations on the new role that you have assumed. Uh, it's, it's a great time to talk about planning for your child, right? Because uh, you are a mother now and you know anything and everything about investments given your long trajectory and your career. But tell us a little bit about how you're feeling as you enter this new phase. Uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, I, I would describe it as beautiful chaos. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's chaos. I don't want to say that uh, life is perfectly sorted between a CEO role and a mom's role and Amphi Vice Chairman and the 500 things I do. Uh, but it is it is beautiful. Uh, it's wonderful to walk home and have someone smile at you. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's fantastic. Uh, you so know, like beautiful someone, chaos. Like someone once told me, it is the most exhilarating and exhausting experience yes. at the same time. Motherhood, right? It, it, it is <laughs> exhilarating and it is exhausting, and it is both in the same day, sometimes in the same hour, and in the same two minutes. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't have it any other way, and I think. Uh, I couldn't have thought of a better time to have a child than this. So I think it's worked out the right way. And it's been a great journey for you, right? I mean, after uh, such a long stint, a successful career, now you've embarked on uh, motherhood. But it also brings us to the point about investments because uh, we tend to get so lost in this daily rigmarole that we forget about investing for our child. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, since it's Children's Day, yeah. uh, when is the right time to start investing for your child? I genuinely believe as early as possible. In fact, my husband and I were very clear that as soon as we had uh, our son, Remy, uh, we would start the process of getting his Aadhaar and his PAN and all his docs in place because that, of course, precedes investing. So we got all that done. He went to the Aadhaar card office, got his little cute picture taken and everything. And he's about to make his first investment actually next week because he just got his bank account open. Um, I think... Uh, really the earlier the better for two reasons one of course we've all talked about compounding so i think the power of compounding is immense for children and the sooner you start the better secondly we all talk about influencing children and the importance of children learning financial literacy mm. the importance of how to managing uh, how to manage your money the importance of valuing money in the first place as they grow up in a more prosperous india and i think what better way to teach them about managing money than them having their own investments in the first place and you know we would do we did an episode last week uh, on the occasion of children's day itself where the expert was pointing out that nowadays children find it very hard to know the difference between want and need when we were younger things were very different and now as you said a more prosperous india uh, you need to kind of instill those values but when you talk about the power of compounding right there's so much that you can do for your child so many options out there where do you start and how do you decide so i think you want to keep it simple with children uh, children have a long time horizon which means they have risk appetite and they need wealth creation so equity is of course the right asset class i think for children if you're looking at long-term investing i mean for my son we're looking at 18 years definitely right so equity is the right asset class i think within equity what we are going to do and i think what works for most children is index funds they're simple you're finally buying india's growth it's a child growing up in a prosperous india who's going to benefit from the economic growth from india so you want to look at equity index funds which will give you that long term india equity growth you don't have to worry about which fund manager whether what will happen over 18 years because 18 years is a long uncertain period mm -hmm. so index funds are a way to cut out that uncertainty and just give them the india growth okay so that's on the equity side which i will come to in detail later but what about other asset classes and what about other schemes right whether it is say fds or corporate fds bharat bond you have the sukanya samriddhi scheme mm -hmm. uh, how do you decide how much to put where okay so i think finally you have to do an asset allocation for your child and asset allocation is very personal whether it's for an older person or for children um if you want to add debt as a part of your asset allocation and you're doing long-term debt investments, then I think long-dated target maturity funds. For instance, you can do a 15-year mm -hmm. target maturity funding. We have a 2037 fund. You can lock in rates today, and rates are high today, incidentally, when we're having this conversation. 
for a 15 year period and then realize that so a long dated but tax efficient option i think could work nicely the second asset class i think that works well beyond domestic equities is international equities for children the reason is many of us will want our children to study abroad mm -hmm. now when i graduated from college from watton uh fees were 40000 us dollars and i think the exchange rate was 40 or 50 wow. cut to today the exchange rate is 80 and fees are probably 70000 dollars mm -hmm. so you want some benefit of that dollar appreciation so you can take money and market in a foreign equity index fund or a foreign index fund some part of it for college education okay um Uh, so you said foreign equity fund for you know college education right if you had to look a little more deeper into in the indian equity space uh, if you want to sort of start now i have a 5 year old and yeah. i want to start investing for him how do you decide whether i need to get into large caps mid cap small cap funds what should the kind of uh, you know portfolio look like the uh, model portfolio so children because they have risk appetite i think some kind of multi cap approach works to children i'll tell you what we are doing uh, you know uh, with our son now we have a index fund called a large and mid cap index fund mm. so it has 50% large cap exposure and 50% mid cap exposure a pure large cap portfolio i think for children in my view is a little conservative mm. they want you know they need the alpha of mid caps now you can debate small caps etc etc but i think this 50 50 combination which we have in a single fund that's one that we are going to do an sip approach works well for children so parents can start saving month on month mm. take a portion of their monthly savings and just allocate it to the child and then they can top up the sip as incomes rise needs rise etc mm. so i think a blend of large and mid cap or some kind of multi cap approach works really well okay and within uh, passive funds uh, what are the options that you would suggest say you know for children i will come to actively managing your portfolio next but within passive funds itself what's the approach so i think the passive equity fund range is very fast today that is the good news and it's very confusing as well right for people who i mean for you and me who've tracked the market yeah. for long we know our way through <laughs> yeah. but every other parent i meet uh, tells me that i'm so confused i don't know where to put the money seriously i mean because there are large cap things there are small cap things there are smart beta things I mean, what do you do yeah. um So I think I'm going to name a couple of things I like. As I said, I love this large and mid cap fund because it's just one simple option. And if I did nothing else for my kid and just did this, I'd be quite happy in a single fund because parents have a lot of parenting to do besides <laughs> managing money for their children. Um, within uh, equity index funds, there are also other options. So you can create your own combinations. You have mid cap passive funds. You have small cap passive funds. You have nifty and next 50 so you can take all of these and make your own combination of a multi cap portfolio so that's one very nice thing you can do i think those are and then you have a bunch of debt passives as i said that mm -hmm. work really well so you know if you're looking at long term right i mean you said you're investing for your son for the next 18 years now we live in a world where there's so much digital disruption every year yeah how do you deal with that i mean a sector that is in flavor today is suddenly become redundant tomorrow do you Do you just write it out, or do you take stock of your portfolio every few years that you've invested in for your child and change your approach? How does it go? I don't think you worry about that too much because eighteen years is too long a period to predict, right? So I think you go with a diversified fund approach, and you really go with the belief that if you're investing for fifteen or eighteen years, as long as you get the India growth story plus some alpha, as long as you get some combination of large, mid, and small, and you get a cross section of sectors that works. One of the nice things about index funds is that they are indices are self-selecting. So if IT as a sector is growing. market cap of it companies will grow and it will be a larger portion of the index mm. so you will get that growth maybe with a lag but you will get it in passive funds so do you have a historical like uh, you know a summarization of how the perhaps the edelweiss funds have done i mean yeah. in the last say 5 to 10 years have the index funds beaten the benchmark yeah. have they beaten passive uh, uh, active funds uh, you know what is the what does the data suggest so i i'll give you two data points uh, one is of a fund that uh, a combination that we are launching and one is of a fund that exists today uh 
we did a combination portfolio of uh, three funds that are coming up for launch. Very, very simple funds. A uh, next 50 index fund, which all viewers are familiar with. A mid-cap momentum fund, so which is 50 mid-cap companies out of the mid-cap universe. And a small cap index fund. These three in a combination, and you can pick the mix you want. You can pick 50, 25, 25. You can pick 40, 30, 30. Um, on a risk basis, they are actually similar to actively managed funds. On a return basis, they outperform by a couple of percentage points. The other one that, so that is a nice combination that you can make and you can tweak the things. Uh, you can tweak the choices. If you want to be more conservative, you add more next 50. If you want to be more aggressive, you add more small cap and mid cap. The other one that we have done is for our large and mid cap uh, index fund, which is the one I talked about. I think that beats most large and mid cap active funds uh, quite handsomely. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to talk a little bit more about that, but I'm going to take a small commercial break. Uh, be right back in a bit in moments from now. Back on Smart Money. Welcome back. You're still watching Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. We're here speaking to the MD and CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management, Radhika Gupta, and we're talking about how to plan for our children and invest for their future. Uh, Radhika, before the break, you were telling us about how uh, this, you know, multi-cap combo index fund, uh, so a group of index funds together, is something that you can create for your child and perhaps prepare better for his future. Tell us a little bit about, more about it. What is the combination that I need to have, different scenarios, and what are the kind of returns I can generate? Sure. So, let me walk you through the components because I really believe the combination is something that you can customize and in our presentations, we have given options for combo. So, the first part of the component is the next 50. Now, that is an index everyone is familiar with. After the Nifty, which is the top 50, it is the next 50 companies in India, the next 50 largest companies. So, you are really benefiting from leaders there. That is what I call your anchor in your safety. The next component is a mid-cap component. It is your mid-cap uh, of the 150 universe of mid-cap. It is the 50 companies that are showing momentum, uh, price momentum so that are sort of really doing well. So, it is the nifty 150 momentum index. And then you have the uh, small cap 250 index which is the collection of small cap companies. So, that is the combination. I think for a conservative investor, you could do 50 in the next, uh, you know, uh, 50 and 25, 25 in the other two. Mm -hmm. You could also do 40, 30, 30. And if you want to skew it more towards mid and small, small cap, perhaps you can do 25 and split in the other two. So, you can really make your own combination of indices. As I said, I think when you look at the combined basket, uh, the drawdowns are very comparable to your market based indices or your active funds, but the returns tend to be I think about 1 to 2 percent higher on a compounded basis. Over the long term. Over the long term, which is meaningful. I mean again you are investing for a long term period and remember this is without an uncertainty factor and this is with very moderate cost. So, the other benefit of this index fund combination for parents is that it is a very low cost thing and low cost matter over a long period. Absolutely. Have you noticed? that a higher percentage of small caps and mid caps or uh, combo fund will give you better returns over the longer term? They will and they will give you, uh, you know, the mid cap momentum index fund for instance is a uh, high return combination. It beats most mid cap funds in any case without too much drawdown. So, adding mid and small cap definitely will add that juice, but that is the choice of the parent as to how much risk they can take or want to take for the child. A lot of parents uh, and people in general are confused about uh, whether to go in for ETFs or index funds, right? Mm -hmm. Just clear the air here and what um, what is it that parents should do for their children? Okay, so I tend to be a little biased in terms of index funds and I will tell you uh, the reasons. I think ETFs are great instruments, but they are meant for traders. Uh, I think when you are investing for your children, you are not a trader, you are really investing for the long term. ETFs and index funds are both tracking the same underlying indices. So, I could have a small cap ETF, I could have a small cap index fund. Both are replicating the returns of the small cap index, giving you exposure to the best 250 small cap companies. ETFs work like a stock. You need a DMAT account and you can trade them. Uh, index funds work like a mutual fund. You have the entire mutual fund structure. You can do an SIP, etc. I think for parents, the need to not have a DMAT account, the need to worry about uh, calling a broker, trading, etc. 
and the ability to do an SIP also, which mm -hmm. is very powerful for children. Index fund format works better for most people. Okay, so index funds over ETFs any day, right? Uh, we also talk about how to plan for your education of your child post 18. Yeah. So, how do you decide which mutual fund or which index fund outperforms up until then? I mean, it's a long time period that we're looking at. And that is why, you know, I think that you almost can't figure out what will outperform in 18 years. If you were to ask me what category is going to outperform in 18 years, if you were going to ask me which AMC is going to outperform, which scheme is, it is very hard to guess. I mean, look back 18 years, the mutual fund industry has changed colors completely in terms of what's on offer and you know forget 18 years in five years we see that the best performing scheme of the last five years is nowhere today so why get into that guesswork that's why the case for passive funds i mean i personally invest in active funds for myself but for my child over 18 years do I want that uncertainty factor? Can I take that bet? Probably no. And do you take stock of your port of your child's portfolio every five years? Because you know a lot changes, right? Sometimes yeah. you bet on a person, you bet on uh, the fund manager, you bet on the the group. Yeah. But things change over over a period yeah. of a decade or so. So when do you take stock? I think you should take stock of your child's portfolio every three four years, as your child is perhaps going to college, getting older the need for cash flow probably increases. So it, it also depends on what you're building that portfolio for. But the child's need in terms of wanting to withdraw from that corpus could increase. So if your child is 13 or 14, maybe you take stock of the portfolio then, make your portfolio a little more conservative, plan for education when he is 18 mm. or 19 and 21, add a little bit of fixed income, maybe you can add a four or five year target maturity fund so that when he's 18, you have a certain corpus in mm. hand. I think the first 10, 12 years when you don't need the corpus are ones to really build the corpus. Mm. And what about gold? Sovereign gold bonds, gold ETFs, anything mm. like that that you would add in your child's portfolio? I would not do it uh, simply because over 18 years, I think equity outperforms as an asset class. So. I don't need the hedge against inflation uh, that gold solves the purpose for. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick rapid fire on uh, not just parenting, investment advice in general. I know none of us are <laughs> you know, experts here. We're Correct. learning along the way. Least of all me <laughs> after a four months old. So I'm no one to give anybody advice. I'm a taker I, of advice. Actually, I'm, I'm a bit more mature mom exactly. compared to you. So maybe I should be uh, exactly. <laughs> throwing should the be advice at you. Uh, but the only advice is that there's no advice. Correct. Okay, so let's do a quick rapid fire, right? Uh, let's start with that. One investment advice that you'd give new moms or dads. Investment advice, I think more money advice, Sonia, I would say, uh, teach your children to value money. Mm. Okay, well, it's hard for adults to value money. It's hard well, for adults to value money, but it's really hard for kids to value money. And I think the earlier you can instill that in today's India, uh, the better. Okay, uh, what's the one investment mistake you would avoid? What's the one investment mistake? Uh, doing very complicated things, especially for a children's portfolio. Really, you can get away by being very simple. Uh, and the second thing I would do is avoid being very late. Okay, start early. Start early. All right. Uh, that's my next question. What's the best time for parents to start investing? Now, literally now. Um, you know, uh, do it as soon as your child is born. Get the setup done and get started. And as they grow up, start talking to them about it. Okay, three top mutual funds that you would advise uh, for your children? So I would do, uh, you know, a large and mid cap index fund, which I've talked about. I would add some flavor of, uh, you know, small cap and mid cap. And if your child is going to study abroad, I would definitely add an international portion. Okay. And an how much should the international portion be? I think you have to work out the rupee corpus. So mm -hmm. if you can try to work out the cost of education, you should try and cover some part of it in international. Okay. Now, education is expensive, so you may not be able to do a lot, uh, but it could be a meaningful portion, could be 25-30% also. Okay, alright, given the way the rupees Yeah, going. so I mean US dollar, a US dollar fund. Okay, and finally, your biggest learning as a new parent? Uh, my biggest learning as a new parent is that, uh, two, one is that you shouldn't be so harsh on yourself. I think moms tend to be very, very harsh on yourself. And one of the things my mother told me is that no mom is ever going to do anything bad for her child. No mom goes out there to be a bad mom. So remember when your child smiles, that you're not a bad parent. Uh, so don't have guilt. Uh, and secondly, I think children role model, 
the behavior they see in adults. Uh, it's the same learning I've had as a CEO. So, uh, be the parent you want your child to be, uh, be the human being you want your child to be, be the leader you want your team to be. And enjoy the ride. And enjoy the, the ride. ride. Uh, right. You know, it goes by very quickly. Radhika, always a pleasure speaking with you across topics, across sectors and now with this new role, I wish you all the very best. Thanks so much for being a part of our Children's Day special on Smart Money. Thank you and happy Children's Day. Well, with that, it is curtains down on another special edition. Keep writing to us. We love receiving feedback. Until we meet again, stay safe.